Hi, I'm Guider Natalie, and today we're going to talk about dressing for outdoors in the winter time when it's cold and snowy. Because guess what? We are doing far more meetings outdoors than we've ever done in the past with Girl Guides of Canada, and that's fantastic. That's great. But we have to change some things. We might have to dress a little bit differently than if we were just playing at recess for half an hour or 45 minutes or even 15 minutes. It's a lot different to dress for a 15 minute recess than it is to dress for an hour and a half or a two hour outdoor meeting where we might be, we might be sitting, we might not be running around, or we might be doing like tobogganing, or we might be uh, snowshoeing, or we might be cross-country skiing, or we might be doing a scavenger hunt, a nature scavenger hunt, or we might be doing a gazillion different things outside. You have to dress for the weather and dress for the activity. So let's see what dressing for the weather and dressing for the activity, what that really means. Come on, because right now I'm cold. I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a really light jacket, and even though I've got a hat on, I'm really cold out here because it's, it's cold, it's winter time. Come on, let's go. So I said you have to dress for the weather and you have to dress for the activity, right? Look familiar? Venn diagram, remember that from grade four? Well, that's the whole thing. You might not wear, in fact, you probably won't wear the exact same clothes for every single activity. You will need a, a base layer, a mid layer, and your outer layer. So you need three layers, base, mid, and outer. And they might differ depending on what you're doing. So, for example, I'm going to do three different activities. We're going to go snowshoeing, which is a snowshoeing or cross-country skiing, which is really high energy, lots and lots of movement, lots and lots of core movement, lots of leg movement, arm movement. Um, we're also going to go tobogganing, and we're also going to do a winter nature scavenger hunt, because those are lots of fun to do. So, if I'm going to need a base layer, a mid layer, and an outer layer for each of those activities. So snowshoeing, I'm going to start off with my base layers. I'm going to probably wear thinner layers because I get really hot when I snowshoe. And then my base layer, I'm going to be able to vent because this has got a nice zipper on it. And on the and I probably won't wear anything a mid layer for my on the bottoms when I go snowshoeing. And then I've got my snow pants and my jacket. That works really well for me. And then of course I've got two pairs of socks. I've got a very thin nylon layer and then a thicker, warmer layer and my two pairs of mittens, my thick, warm wool inner mitten and then my waterproof outer mitten layer. And that's what I would wear if I was going snowshoeing or cross country skiing. So now I'm going to go tobogganing. Favorite winter activity, if you're a brownie or a guide or a spark or a pathfinder or a ranger, I'm going to go with my merino wool um, upper layer, base layer, and then my really super thick and warm base layer on my bottom because I always get cold. And then a good mid layer that I can unzip if I get, if I get really warm going up and down the, the, uh, the tobogganing hill. And my good ski pants because I really like them. They're nice and warm. And I wear a different jacket. I'm going to wear my ski jacket because it has this really cool feature called a, um, it keeps the snow out. It's kind of, you snap it together at the waist and it keeps the snow from going up, up inside your jacket. So that's important if you're, if you're tobogganing. So, and of course I would still wear my two mittens and my two, and I double layer my socks as always, and a nice warm hat too. This is what I would wear if I was going tobogganing with my unit. If I'm doing a nature study, just to walk around at a unit meeting, this is what I would wear. I would still wear my base layer and it would be my polar fleece pants and my wool merino top. My mid layer would be polar fleece and my outer layers would be a, a nice waterproof pant because I'm not going to be rolling around in the snow during a nature walk. And it has a really warm winter coat with lots of layers with extra polar fleece on the inside, really nice and warm. And of course, a nice warm hat and my regular two pairs of socks and my two pairs of mittens. But I might not wear these mittens. I might wear another pair of mittens. Hold on a second, let me see if I can find Ah, it. yes, this is a much better choice for mitten C because it has a finger and a thumb. Because if I'm doing a nature walk with my guides or my brownies or my sparks, more than likely I might want to write something down. So if I had a finger and a thumb, then I can keep my mittens on and still keep my hands nice and warm and dry. And of course, 
the outer, my outer mitten, because I, that's what I like to have. A couple of layers. And this is what I would wear if I was going to do a nature walk in the snow and in the winter time. I hope that answers some questions about what a base, mid, and outer layers, what they look like and for different situations. But what about your hands, your head, and your feet? Three really important places that you really want to keep warm and dry. Mittens and gloves are different. Mittens, first of all, they keep your fingers together and they keep your hands warmer, period. Um, gloves, you've got better dexterity, especially, which is good if you're like you're doing a craft or something outside or buckling up snowshoe buckles or something like that. So I personally, I always have cold hands. I like wearing two pairs of mittens. I like having uh, an inner pair, which is, which is wool, and then an outer pair, which is waterproof and I just fit them inside each other, just fit the one inside the other, and there I go. And I have, and I'm nice and warm and dry. And in case you were wondering, the cuff, personally, I like to have my cuff on the outside of my coat. So my coat will be here on the inside, my coat cuff, and then my mitten cuff will be outside my coat. That's how I like to have it. And if you're really lucky enough to be from Newfoundland, then you might be able to find a pair of mittens that have that are thrummed, that have got little pieces of sheep's wool, real sheep's wool inside. Oh man, I got these the last time I was in Newfoundland and I love them. They keep my hands nice and nice and warm. This is breathable. And even though this is for a kid, my hand still fits in it just fine. And it's nice, and this is, this would be, again, I would wear it with the over and over mitten over top to help keep this dry and give a little bit of a weather barrier. Again, it depends on my activity and the weather, right? Those two things depend on what I'm wearing. Now, what about my head? Oh, look, here's this cute little, here's this, this cute little hat that I, would I wear this? It's pretty cute. Um, no, I probably wouldn't wear it. Not because it's got a little pussycat on top, but because it's cotton. I made this, I knit this for my daughter. She let me borrow it for this video. Um, but it's just simply not warm enough. So, oh, here, what about this hat? Yeah, my favorite, guy, my favorite girl guide hat. Really like this one. It's not that warm though, it's acrylic. Um, and there's no lining inside, so it's not the warmest hat. Let me see. Ah, yes, this hat I love. It's a mixture of merino wool. Merino is a type of sheep, so it's a mixture of merino wool, and on the inside, there's a polar fleece lining. Now, you can get great polar fleece hats at the dollar store, just a dollar or two, they're excellent. Getting an over mitt is, in my opinion, really, really important. This pair of over mitts I've had for about 22 years. Yep, 22 years, and I use them all, all winter long every year and they still look really really good so that just goes to prove that if you spend some a little bit of money on qual on some quality um, outdoor gear it can really really last but again you don't have to buy it if you can borrow it or you don't have to buy it new you can borrow it from a friend um, you could trade maybe you can um, look for it at a, at a thrift store a value village or goodwill whatever you have those are all really good options as well Okay, so you've had a fun day, a fun guide meeting or a sparks meeting, brownie meeting, whatever, and now everything is absolutely soaking wet in your home. What do you do? You put it on a mitt drying or a boot drying rack like this. I think I got this at Canadian Tire for just a few bucks. And by the time I wake up tomorrow morning, everything will be dry, just like magic. Boots. I'll tell you a story. A few years ago when I was a brown owl, uh, we took 36 brownies camping and we had winter camping. Uh, in a building, of course, not in tents. We had a fantastic time. It was about minus one to plus one. It had just freshly fallen some snow. There was about two or three feet of snow. We tobogganed, we snowshoed, we played really hard. We went hard, just like brownies can go hard. Fantastic. We came in um, at, for dinner and everybody was soaked to the bone. Everybody's boots were soaked, except, and this is the truth, except the girls who were wearing Sorrells a Canadian company, loves Sorrells. I've only worn Sorrells for the last 20 years or so, and honestly, out of the 36 brownies, or however many brownies we had, only the girls the girls who wore Sorrells without the fuzz around the top, because the fuzz wicks the water down, they were the only ones with dry feet. 
So when you are wearing boots and snow pants that have a gaiter on them, that have an elastic, you put your foot into your boot. You pull your socks up, you put your foot into the boot. Do up your boot all the way. Pull your gaiter, your elastic, over your boot. Over, not inside, over your boot. That's what you do, like that. Now there's lots of other things I can tell you about how to stay warm and dry when you're outside in the Canadian winter. I'm not gonna go into everything today. It's been a long video already. I don't wanna bore you all. But I do want you to know that you can have lots of fun outside in the winter time in Canada, in the snow, in the cold. It's fantastic. You just have to remember to stay dry, stay warm. It's a lot easier to stay dry wearing the proper clothing, especially a good outer layer, than to try and get dry or get warm once you've been wet and cold. Now this message is going to be for a lot of you rangers and pathfinders out there who only want to wear leggings as your outer layer. That ain't going to cut it. Sorry to say that. It's just not going to work. You're not going to be warm enough you're not, and you're going to be uncomfortable and cold. So let's sum up what we've talked about today. We've talked about you need to wear layers. You need to have a base layer, a mid layer, and an outer layer. Your skin, your mid layer gives you lots of warmth. Your outer layer protects you from the elements. Um, and don't forget your head and your hands, they can be layered as well, especially your hands and your feet. Your feet can definitely be layered. You can wear two pairs of socks. Um, remember, no cotton. Cotton is rotten because it doesn't wick the moisture away. If you sweat wearing cotton, you just stay wet and clammy and cold. That's not fun. And then, of course, we talked about you have to match the clothing to the activity. And we talked about you know, that you should try to wear wool or polyester because they, they wick the moisture away. Um, never to wear cotton. Cotton's rotten. And you don't have to buy everything brand new. You can borrow, trade, you can look, go thrifting. That's kind of, I think, what we've talked about today. I hope you have lots of fun with your unit outside having programming, being outside in the Canadian winter. It's cold, it's snowy, it's so much fun. I'm Guider Natalie, I'll see you soon.